Hey, it's Rachel with Journey Back Quilts. In this series, we are making traditional quilt blocks. In this lesson, we're going to be making the Whirlwind quilt block. Let's get started. To make the Whirlwind block, you're going to need four, four and a quarter inch wide by nine and three eighths inch long pieces, and then one seven and a quarter inch square. So with this, I'm going to show you how to get that nine and three eighths because sometimes I'm, I have seen people get a little freaked out by that three eighths or anytime we have to cut into an eighth type um, marking. So I just want to show you a little bit where it is. So if you think nine and three eighths is close to nine and a half, right? So just put your ruler on the nine and a half and then bump it down one tiny notch, not to the full quarter mark, but the one right in between the half and the quarter, that is your three eighths mark. And so I'm going to make sure that this is lined up here um, perpendicularly with a line going horizontally and vertically here with the nine and three eighths before I make this cut. Okay. Now the next thing we have to do with these nine and three eighths inch blocks is I'm going to just go ahead and stack them all together and do this all at one time. You can do it one at a time if you want to. Now I'm going to make sure they're all going the same direction, their right sides up so that I cut them all going the same. If you have um, one going right sides down and the rest are right sides up or two are down and two are up, uh, two are going to be wrong. <laughs> so you want to make sure that they are all going the same direction here. And then we're going to cut this left upper corner off. So we're going to put our ruler with the 90 degree, which is the straight one going right through the diagonal on the bottom edge of the block, matching up the very corner with the corner of your block. And this is what we're going to be trimming off right here. Let me get it lined up just so. So we're going to trim this portion off. All right. I know it's scary, but you can do it. And if you mess up, well, try, try again. Okay. So you can save those for another project, maybe some half square triangles, because that's the perfect dimension for a half square triangle. So I'm going to put those in my, my scrap bin. And then we need to cut this seven and a quarter inch square into diagonals. So we're going to line up our ruler with the diagonal points. We're going to cut it diagonally and then carefully lift up your ruler. Try not to mess your block up so that you can just put it to the opposite points and we're going to cut it diagonally this way as well. All right, now we have the pieces we need. Okay, so with these pieces, we're going to be sewing them to this side of our blocks. So the point to this side, I know it looks really weird, but we're going to start at this point and sew down and let this be our little tail at the end. And that's totally fine. Okay. So this is one side and we're going to do the exact same thing to all four sides. All right. So I'm just kind of line it up, see if I can show you how it goes together. Okay. So then this turns rut row, rut row, large. Here we go this way. <laughs> this is going to turn this way. This is turning this way. I know it feels like you should be putting them on the end here, right? But it's not. It's on the side. And this is our whirly gig block. <laughs> That's what I want to call it, whirly gig. But it's a whirlwind block. Ta-da! So you can see how it kind of makes a pinwheel in the middle. And once we have these blocks put together, all four sides, then it'll be easier to put them together, but I just wanted to show you this is what it's going to look like. Isn't that cool? All right, so I'm going to go piece these together. We're going to just sew all of these 
um, triangles to the edges of these rectangles that we chopped off like so and we can chain piece all those and they are actually the exact same block if you stacked them together ta-da we're going to be sewing down this side make sure you sew the right um, the correct side and not this one all right let's go to the sewing machine all right taking one of these blocks making sure that the raw edges are matched up the points are matched up and then I'm going to flip it over and sew it down going this way okay next This is a really simple, fun block to do. The hardest part was cutting that nine and three eighths and then cutting the 45 degree angle. Just make sure you've got it sewing on the correct side. Also, you'll see as you sew this down, that little tail that's left over, you're gonna sew right in between that tail and the green part of your block. So right here, see if you can see that. So see this little tail? You're gonna hit right there at that little point where it's kind of coming in together. It's a good indication that you have your quarter inch seam just right. Ta -da! Love it. One more. All right, let's clip apart the connecting threads. Take this to the ironing board. And I'm just gonna iron these going out towards my little corners. All right, I grabbed my design board so that I could lay this out and I'm just gonna make this aside, this aside. That is so fun and so fast. Love it. So now we're just gonna make it kind of like an hourglass block. We're gonna sew these two together and these two together, iron them in opposite directions so we can nest that seam and get that perfect point in the center and our block will be finished. How fast was that? So fun. Let's go to the sewing machine. All right, so we've got these two and I'm just gonna put them right sides together. And we're going to start at the point this point, the 90 degree point, not the 180 degree point, <laughs> and sew those down. Same with the opposite side, right sides together. Let's go back to the ironing board. So I'm gonna iron both of them going towards the longer side of the block instead of this side. That way they're both going in the same direction so that when they mirror each other, we can nest those seams. Okay, let's flip that around. Now they're going in opposite directions so I can 
put those together, nest that seam, and sew that down. If you want to put a pin or a wonder clip there to help hold it in place, you're welcome to do that because I know we're, we've got a little stretch before we get to that point. We want to make sure everything stays together. I'm just pinching it with my fingers while I'm holding it there, but I know sometimes it can get awkward when you're not used to juggling all the fabric. And take little short spurts of sewing and then just stop and rearrange your fabric if need be. Get everything lined up. You don't have to get everything lined up right at the beginning other than your nested point. <laughs> That's the only one you have to worry about. All right, let's go back to the ironing board. I'm going to spin my seams. So we've got this one going sideways. So this one's going to go up. And that's going to open right there, maybe. There we go. Okay, Oop. iron it from the top. This is so cool. Can you imagine several of these blocks together? You'd have your next block, so this point would match up with this, and so it would just have this continuation of this really cool um, whirlwind block. I mean, it's just so cool. So uh, last step though is we need to square this up to 12 and a half inches. So I'm putting the six and a quarter inch mark right here. The diagonal is running on the diagonal of my block. And I think I just have some little dog ears to trim off is all. Maybe just a little bit right here. Oop. Here's another set of dog ears that blended in with my mat. <laughs> Let me just trim those up. And yes, I know, I was cutting towards my body. No, no, no. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> All right, there we go. You made the whirlwind block. Great job. Hey, thanks so much for joining me today in making this whirlwind quilt block. I hope that you enjoyed this and you're going to go make one for yourself. We would love to see the pictures of all these quilt blocks that you're making. You can post them in our free Facebook group, which is in the description box below. If you would like more help in your quilting journey, I invite you to join our society, a membership where you will get a library full of quilting tutorials to help you on your quilting journey. You'll have access to me and a group of other like-minded quilters from around the world, discounts on products and services, and so much more. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next week where we start adding our sashing and cornerstones to finish this quilt top. I'll see you then. In this lesson, we're going to be making the whirlwind block. Whirlwind quilt block.